One possibility is, well, maybe God actually visits them. But if that's true, as a scientist, I can't test this. There's no way of finding out. One possibility is that the seizure activity in the temporal lobe somehow creates all kinds of odd, strange emotions in the person's mind, in the person's brain. And this welling up of bizarre emotions may be interpreted by the patient as, as visits from another world uh, or as God is visiting me. Maybe that's the only way he can make sense of this welter of strange emotions uh, going on in his brain. A third possibility is that this has something to do with the way in which the temporal lobes are wired up to deal with the world emotionally. As we walk around and interact with the world, you need some way of determining what's important, what's emotionally salient, and what's relevant to you versus something trivial and unimportant. Now, how does this come about? We think what's critical is the connections between the sensory areas in the, in the temporal lobes and the amygdala, which is the gateway to the emotional centers in the brain. The strength of these connections is what determines how emotionally salient something is. And therefore you could speak of a, a sort of emotional salience landscape with hills and valleys corresponding to what's important and what's not important. And each of us has a slightly different emotional salience landscape. Now consider what happens in temporal lobe epilepsy when you have repeated seizures. What might be going on is an indiscriminate strengthening of all these pathways. It's a bit like water flowing down rivulets along the cliff surface. When it rains repeatedly, there's an increasing tendency for the water to make furrows along one pathway, and this progressive deepening of the furrows artificially raises the emotional significance of some categories of inputs. So instead of just finding lions and tigers and mothers emotionally salient, he finds everything deeply salient. For example, a grain of sand, a piece of driftwood, seaweed, all of this becomes imbued with deep significance. Now this tendency to ascribe cosmic significance to everything around you might be akin to what we call a mystical experience or a religious experience. He has a seizure, he'll want to talk philosophy. He'll want to discuss all the things that are floating around in the stew he's got up here that he's trying to reconstruct. Mm. Thoughts that he may have had just, just floating through his mind while he was in a seizure mode uh -huh. may come surfacing. I see. Okay. Also, but also uh, you said he's become more emotional because, because of the seizure, so that's, mm -hmm. that's helpful too. Much more sensitive. But oddly enough, not in regards to himself. Okay. 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 But in regards to atrocities, disasters, things like that, anywhere and everywhere. Oh. Wrongs done to other people. Jesus Christ. And Yugoslavia, you know. Yeah. It's, oh, God. But you know what? Yeah. A lot of times I sit there and go, okay, um, there's a reason for ethnic cleansing. Mm -hmm. It's right. And I sit there and totally justify it in my own head. Oh my God, I 100% justified, 100% right for the human race. Oh my God. And you know what? I am so right in my own head, I know I could go out there and get people to follow me. Not, not like these wackos with sheets on their heads. Not like those idiots. But now it's just the new generation of the prophets. Yep. And are, were all the prophets people that were flopping around on the ground? Is that what this whole message was, the gift from the gods this whole time? That's possible, isn't it? Yeah. I've never been religious, ever.
the one I compare myself to is Noah and his ark. Us saving our earth as a ship. I would say he was a prophet too and did something about it, saving everything by getting two of each. I just know it's not going to be 40 days and 40 nights, everyone. It's going to be 40 billion years before we're ready to take off in that ship. Ramachandran's proposal that John's intense religious feelings may be the result of faulty wiring in his temporal lobes raises a fascinating question. Might all our brains be in some way hardwired for religious belief? A few years ago, the popular press inaccurately quoted me as having claimed that there is a God center or a G-spot in the temporal lobes. Now, this is complete nonsense. There is no specific area in the temporal lobe concerned with God. But it's possible there are parts of the temporal lobes whose activity is somehow conducive to religious belief. Now, this seems unlikely, but it might be true. Now, why might we have neural machinery in the temporal lobes for belief in religion? Well, belief in religion is widespread. Every tribe, every society has some form of religious worship. And maybe the reason it evolved, if it did evolve, is that it is conducive to the stability of society. And this may be easiest if you believe in some sort of supreme being. And that may be one reason why religious sentiments evolved in the brain. The only reason I probably would get rid of the seizures and epilepsy because I've never even seen them is because of my family, because of him. I would, I would keep them for those visions because of the way I see the world falling into place and things like that. It's a wild little place to, to be stuck in there. But it also seems like a key. And right now I haven't learned how to get to the key without, use the key without those seizures. If I was told that I'd never have a chance to have that key again, sorry, I'm going to hold on to that thing. Just because some patients with temporal lobe seizures have intense religious experiences, this does not in any way invalidate that experience for that patient. In fact, it can very often enrich the patient's life enormously, and it poses a dilemma very often for the physician because what right do we have to treat the patient with medication or with surgery, thereby, in some instances, depriving him of these valuable experiences? To me, the exciting thing is that subjects like God and religion can now be actually addressed by us scientists. We can begin to ask questions about religion and God and begin to approach these questions by listening to these patients, by talking with them, and by studying them. The human brain is without any doubt the most complexly organized form of matter in the universe. The brain is made up of 100 billion nerve cells or neurons Someone has calculated that the number of possible permutations and combinations of brain activity exceeds the number of elementary particles in the universe. And this gives you some idea of the staggering complexity one is faced with in trying to understand the functions of this mysterious organ. So the question is, how do you even begin? A Channel 4 recorded information line with details of organizations offering support on issues like brain injury is available on 08456 10 22 55.